so that I can't see it. So hi, Erica. You made it, but you are silent. <coughs> hi, Kathy. Hi, AT. Oh my god, thank you so much for waiting, everybody. <sighs> and Erica, Erica, are you are you quiet because of mic problems or are you quiet because you can't talk? Mic problems? I'm going to send a mic to you. I've been trying to decide which one. But but one will be one will be coming. And I can see I can see the chat window too. And I can see our messages window. But I can't see the future, sadly. That's a sad, sad thing. And Dawn, you're feeling better this week. Better, not perfect, but a lot better than I was last week. That that is a good thing. I'm snarfly, but that's because we've been having wind and I'm also to put it put everything else at bay. I have been eating grapefruit like like it's going out of style. So citrus is popular in our house right now still. It's mm -hmm. a good thing. Yes, mm -hmm. better better is good. Erica said, enjoy my silence. Wow. <laughs> no. Wait, so is. is she typing in the in the YouTube one or in the chat one? She's typing in the YouTube one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um so Dawn yeah. While you were sick, did you did you do anything crafty? I did boring crafty thing. <laughs> well, um, better than nothing. Because, you know, I my brain was not working. So I knit around and around and around and around and around <laughs> on, uh -huh. on the boring stockinette sweater. <laughs> so it got bigger. The orange briar rose stockinette sweater, <laughs> but it's not very exciting. That's it. It doesn't have to be exciting. It just has to be knit. Yeah, and but I did probably put you know a good six inches on it, so that's nice. Wow. Yeah. And you're still liking that yarn, the the foofy yarn. Mm, this is the. Oh, this isn't that. This is the briar no. rose. No. Yep. This is the briar rose. Um, the one that has silk in it. Mm. I can't remember the name. Because cold meds, you know, <laughs> it'll come to me and I'll shout it out and then you'll be like, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, probably totally no, I'll shout it out at three in the morning because that's when I remember things. Right. Exactly. But yeah, no, I, it's, I love it. It's soft and I really like it. That's nice. How long does it take you to do something like six inches in stockinette in the round? Well, Usually a lot longer than a couple of days, but I literally had a couple of days where I it was that kind of sick where you can't read and you can't watch TV and you <laughs> can't whatever. So I like listened to NPR and just knit in circles. That's all I did. And slept for days. So it yeah, usually, it, I mean, obviously the sweater's not that big, so <laughs> it's not done yet. Um, so... I don't know. In the normal course of my life, six inches probably takes me a month. <laughs> wow. Because it's just, you know, a row here, a row there while you're doing homework and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. And then we are also in swim meet finals time. Oh. So um, portable stockinette in the round. <laughs> Sock. What cute. No. Sock. Mm, wait. I have to do that. What yarn is that? Um, that's a remarkable question. Paca Peds Superwash Alpaca Sock Yarn. <gasps> alpaca? It is 20% super fine alpaca, 65% super wash wool, and 15% nylon. It is made by the Alpaca Yarn Company. Where did you find it? Um, I got it at a store here in the cities that is actually closed now, so it's been with me for a long time. Um, but my daughter's been at me to knit them up for her for a really long time. This one is, the color's name is Caribbean Chocolate. And Put it up again. I wanted so to see it again. It has like a mm. deep turquoise and a light turquoise and then brown. Like a cool brown, not a warm brown. That. And a gray brown. I like those browns. Yeah, it's I like it. And you know, it's stripey and I people kept knitting people I knew kept asking me why I was doing the heel like this because I love it when the self-striping yarns do this thing. 
the short row thing? What? No, this is in short rows. So I just mm -hmm. did. Uh, this is the heel I did was Amy Singer's um, that sock pattern that yep, that I can't sock remember recipe that she did. So it's a gusset. It's a it's like a gusset heel flap sock, but it's not. There's no putting stitches on hold and then picking them up again. You do it toe up and you knit the gusset and then you do some short rows. Oh, yeah, um, I did that. Yes, I did that yeah. with the Hunger Games socks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, really, I really, really like it, and I know what the dimensions for my foot need to be now, um, so I use it all the time. Um, but I love when self-striping yarn does the pooly thing and changes yeah. up. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people want their stripes to be perfect, but I love it <laughs> when it does that. Perfection in stripes seems to be time wasted. I, I, I mean, like when the striking. colors. I like when the colors play around. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, two really boring stockinette <laughs> knitting projects. There you go. <laughs> you you beat me by one. Oh. <laughs> I, I did. Um, I was showing everybody last week, and I got I got feedback from everybody last week too that uh, I have been. I started making uh, a cuff to cover up my my friend Sam. Her IV is like right there, mm -hmm. and she has to wear this IV for two days every six weeks. And I made her a bunch of the Canucks when she had to put the IV in her hand, but now she has to uh, wear it in a more obvious place. And so she asked for a cuff that would just cover it. Mm -hmm. And and I've done this again. Um, and so I, I found some yarn that were her colors, and last last week, Kathy and A.T., how I had, what, a couple inches maybe? I had the cuff and not much else. And so that's how far I oh, am Oh, nice. I wonder if I can... Aha, uh -huh, there I can go. Yeah. So there. Oop. Nice. And the one, the one thing that I... I forgot I have not dealt with in a long time is black so dark and nice pretty colors so not mm -hmm. dark and the light stuff is showing through oh on, on the some black of those stitches places. where it's I've been going it through and like pulling it through and you yeah. know pulling the black to tighten it up yeah but it's not like let's see well but when you wash it if the black plumps up you might not be able to see it so much I was hoping that when I go and wash it and thwack the bejujus out of it that it'll yeah. loosen up a little bit. But Yeah, that might. For people at playing along at home in the audio version oh, yes. of Crafty Chat, <laughs> the cuff has like a two color rib, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a and it is a variegated ball. yarn. Yep, like blues and greens if I'm correct, right? Kind of? Yeah. It's all ocean colors. Those are her colors. Yeah. yeah. Um alternating with a solid black. And then once the corrugated ribbing is done, um, they're really big polka dots, kind of egg yeah. shapes, sort of, um, that are on the rest of the cuff. I can show you. That There's a chart. <laughs> right Heather charted it out on knitting graph paper. <laughs> Why? Because it's been so long. And actually, so AT, they weren't checks. They were, they were these kind of you know, bobbly shaped things, and I got through, I got through the first one, and I looked at it, and we were talking last week with, um, with you and Henrietta about whether this was going to be, um, too tight to go over the IV itself, and we all agreed that ribbing would probably be tighter, and, and all of that, and so I thought, well, I'm knitting so loose now, I'm just not going to worry about it, and I just kept going, and I got through the first bobble and went, mm, nope, this cuff is going to fit <laughs> the microphone. <laughs> that cuff, that end of the cuff is going to fit down here, but I was going to need to make it bigger up there, so I, I hid increases where at the end at the end of the top of the bobbles, the first set of bobbles, right before it divides off, right, right before the black divides off to go around the next bobble, I put one increase going both ways. I just did a knit front and back. And, um, and so it went from th three stitches between the bobbles to five stitches between the bobbles. 
and that seems to be working. That seems to be working pretty well. Erica said, "Sly." I <laughs> thought I was pretty good with that one too, because it's been so long. But you can't tell. I mean, it's really. Maybe when yeah. I'm done, it'll be more noticeable that I that I fudged that. But I how's the knitting sense. going for you? It's. <laughs> it was hmm. the weirdest thing because I. Oh geez, how long ago was it, Erica? Maybe you remember. It was two years ago. I taught myself um, the the production knitting where you hold it like it's a knit a pen or pencil and do that. And I I'd worked so hard to get that down, and this was before we left Virginia, and and then I haven't knit for so long, and I was I was already part way through the first row of bobbles when I realized. That I had been, I'd been holding everything in that same way, which is not the way I learned how to knit. So it's been going faster than I thought it would, because this hasn't been more than an hour, maybe an hour total of TV knitting time since last Tuesday. Nice. And I and I wasn't even close to a bobble last week, so I was pretty happy. Good. I was I'm I'm hoping off and it was her birthday on Saturday so I blew that but yeah, you'll get there she's at used least to it. you're at least you're knitting and yes. it's going well because what was the last thing you even knit mm-hmm <laughs> I can never remember uh -uh. I have no idea oh and you didn't see that last week I said I loved your cowl that you wore the last time you were on so was I that went, the stripey one? The stripey the one? one? Mm -hmm, the simple, the really simple crochet one? Yeah, yeah. That you told us how many stitches? 66 stitches around. Yeah. So, ah, nice. I, I went and started my own. And I, I, it's the, um, what was it? Is it Red Hat? It's Red Hat. We were joking about Red Hat. And <laughs> I've got to turn that up. Okay. There. Oh, it's nice. focused for all. And it goes really thing. fast too, because you just like single crochet chain, single crochet chain, yes. single crochet chain. Nice. It was. It's crazy fast, and and I can feel it. Um, once you get past the first two rows, mm -hmm. I don't have to look anymore because I can feel where the where the hole is. Yeah. 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 Nice. Awfully nice. But yes. yeah, this is like super cheap, easy to work with yarn because it's a single ply, and it's the red hat. Oh, nice. And I just I just wanted something that had kind of muted colors and mm -hmm. um, I wanted muted colors, but I also I was really drawn to that dusty pink and mm -hmm. I didn't have anything else with that color in it. And Erica I Erica said there's there isn't much that tempts her in crochet, but this this does. <laughs> I have to say for idiot knitting or idiot crocheting, you know, where you don't have to think a whole mm -hmm. lot. Yeah, that has been great, Dawn. It's a, it's the stuff that I like the best, and crochet. I it is it. I like it. It. I don't have much time in my life where I can really attend to a really complicated piece or pattern, um, and for me, crochet is more rewarding because the structure. Is more complex, even though the stitches are simple. The structure of the stitches is more complex, right. so you get you get something texturally more interesting than just plain stuck in at knitting. Um, and if you, when you block it and things open up, it looks really complicated. Um, but yeah, I don't think simple's good. <laughs> simple's yes. good. Yes. It is very good, especially these days. And I, I remember, it was when we went on the cruise. Was it Turkish crochet that you were learning then? Probably. Mm -hmm. The long yep. thing. Because yep. I had said something on the podcast about crochet being less flexible, in that you know you get you get serious drape with with knitting, depending mm -hmm. on how, what you're knitting. Mm -hmm. And and that I said that you couldn't get the same thing with crochet, and you you wrote me and said, mm, that's you not have to you have to pair the right yarn with the right hook. You have to get the gauge right. If you knit if you crochet 
with a G hook and worsted weight yarn, which is what everybody tells you to do, you're going to end up with like crocheted iron. <laughs> you know, you really have to, I think worsted weight yarn needs to be worked with like at least a J or a K wow. hook. I might even nice, have one here. To too. get a nice drapey fabric. It really depends on the structure of the yarn, but um, yeah. you can get fantastic uh, fabrics with crochet if you get the yarn hook pairing the right. And stitch. You have to throw the stitch in there, too, because they're also different. Um, Was it also something, because I see this is going back years in conversation. Did it have anything to do with whether you go through one of the loops on a chain or mm -hmm. go under both yep. of the loops? Yeah, that affects it a lot as well. You'll get a sturdier fabric most of the time working through two loops. If you work through either just the back loop or the front loop, and so for people who don't crochet, when you work when you work a crochet stitch across the top of the stitch, and I don't have any. I know I was just gonna. I don't have any. I don't have any right here. Um, when you work the top of a crochet crochet stitch, you'll see like a V um, across the top. So there's a front loop and a back loop to the top of your crochet stitch, and you can work under one of those or the other. Um, and working through one loop gives you will give you a much more um, elastic, flexible fabric than working through both. I'm actually. As well. Um, the there is something about what you just said. Uh, da, 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 da. The top of the V. The the, the fr um. When I first picked up crochet books, because I learned how to crochet from my grandmother, but I didn't know what anything was called. So mm -hmm. at some point, I bought. I think it was like the Great American Afghan, because I don't do anything by half. If I'm going to do something, <laughs> if you're gonna do like the huge. Yeah. yeah. It's going like to be the, the Vogue like the map, map of the world. Of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, I you have did, up here. I know. <laughs> I, can, I, can show, I can show you at least what one part of it is. But, but when, the, when I was first starting and looking at, uh, at the instructions, I remember distinctly looking at them and thinking, well, I can see three different ways that I could go into the stitch. Because I could yep. go in the front loop, I could go in the back loop, or I could go under both loops. And I never saw it referred to. There was always an assumption made that you knew what you were doing as far as that went. Is there terminology that I just missed because I didn't know what it was? Or is there an assumption about whether you're going to go one, one, two, or front or back? Back then, um, you know, I certainly, I have some stitch dictionaries from um, the... I don't know, like 60s, 70s. Um, and in terms of patterns, they call it out. Stitch, in mm -hmm. terms of stitch patterns, they call it out. Um, but in terms of like a project, mm -hmm. there probably was, if they're not saying it, they mean work through both. Work okay. under, work under that whole V. Right. Um, Let's see if I can do this. And now to, you know, to do like a regular... Um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> to do so, those are the little V's that Heather's showing an illustration of. So you can work under both of them. So that's like a regular single crochet stitch, double crochet stitch, whatever works under both legs of that V. Um, and you get a different stitch if you work through the front loop or through the back loop. And you'll see those abbreviations as TFL. T yeah, TFL or TBL. Um, sometimes with an O on the end only. Oh. So oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, TBLO or um, through back loop only, through front loop only. Yeah. I've seen that and I couldn't figure. I couldn't That's figure out what, what it means. means. <laughs> Look at how educated I'm getting. Yeah, and I will. Um, I'll try and get some of my crochet stuff together next week and show you different fabrics. Cool. So, because I know I have a bunch here, as well as some of the, um, you know, the Tunisian crochet gives you a whole different effect too. Yeah, I remember being really, really yeah. surprised. And Erica, Erica has reminded me that it's not idiot knitting anymore. It's potato chip knitting or autopilot knitting. So <laughs> I was being not nice to knitting. Knitting? I was going to say You're not nice to idiot. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a knitting bully, Heather. <laughs> I try so hard not to be, and yet I fail. 
But I wanted to show you um, a bag that Erica sent. <laughs> not nice to myself. That's not a surprise, though. That's I. It's fine if I'm not nice to myself. The um, I wanted to show you this because I think the construction is so cool. This Erica sent this for Christmas, and Erica, if you can remember the name, she doesn't sell them though, does she? She just made it. Yeah, she doesn't sell them. So check out the construction on this. It's a little knitting bag, and there is this flap that opens into an external pocket and then the seam goes down that way and it has the bottom where it's been folded like a grocery bag and a seam that goes that way and then drawstring at the top and nice. it's lined inside and I have sat then seams going up both sides and I have sat here examining this sucker trying to figure out how she did the whole thing because I can tell with the side flaps the side flaps are actually folded down from the top so that right. triangular piece came down and that's about as far as I've gotten <laughs> it's some kind of origami bag and we just don't know how it all comes together it really really is and it's the perfect size for sock nice socks and, and the name is Deb that little exterior pocket where you can stash stuff is quite clever. I think so too. And with the flap over it, you really can put stitch markers and stuff inside. And it's lovely. Neat. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah, plus Erica's one. holding hers up too. Erica has a matchy oh, matchy oh, wait, one. Wait, wait, I have to select the, you. The fabric is thing one, thing two bags, or fabric, and they yep. have so they have matchy thing one, thing two bags. Is yours the same size, Erica? Hers looks a little bigger. Uh, it looks it looks bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you you kept that one and sent me the little one. <laughs> <laughs> she apparently Erica really likes the big one. <laughs> it's a good thing to have. Yay! I have I have one other thing to show you guys that is related to me but not me. My aunt in California has started. Well, she she always she always knew how to sew. She always did sew things, but. I think she's she's achieved a different level of sewing lately because I will read you what she said first. She said, I made, um, I hope you like your wallet. I used a book print for Heather and a music print for my sister. And she said, I designed the pattern using a Vera Bradley wallet as a prototype. So she looked at a Vera Bradley wallet and then she made... Oh, cute. Right, let me see if I can get this focused. Because the fabric alone is just so adorable. It so is. It's that. like the spines of old leather bound embossed, gold embossed books. Yep. And it's got uh it's got many layers of books too, which is kind of fun. So it looks like the books just go on forever. And it's a lined pocket with a zipper that's embedded in the outside. And then she's got, <laughs> I can't believe she did all this. It's got a key hook on it. And then it's Velcro. She has the plastic. <laughs> like a driver's license, driver's license pouch. holder. Yep. Nice. And then a place for your pen. And then three, three or four pockets that are, they, they're so well constructed. She must have, um. She must have interfacing, the heavy, thick interfacing on, on some of those, maybe the one in back. And then a place for your checkbook. And is there something else? Oh, yeah, and then the, front, the first pocket is subdivided so that you can do credit cards that stay separated. And she just, you know, made it up after looking at this thing. I People have nice. much more talent and many more brain cells than I do. <laughs> I, know. I, I just saw that um, AT, AT gasps and Kathy loves the fabric. I love the fabric too and I'm going to email her and find out if she, um, if she got it at a specific store or if, or if it was something she found on the interwebs. I have no idea. Speaking of fabric, I have some fabric to show you. <gasps> oh good. And ooh, AT found the origami pattern for the bags. Oh, fun. 
Yes, email it. Oh, please. Yay. Crowdsourcing. Okay. It works. Right. It's awesome. So, well, it works because we have awesome people. <laughs> so this one is a, um, a fat squirrel bag, mm -hmm. fat squirrel fibers bag. And I don't ask me what size this one is because I really have no idea. I think <laughs> it's either a small wedge or a large. It, I think it's a small wedge. But um, can you see the fabric? Whoa, it's library cards. It's all library cards. I love that. Isn't it cool? And there's like, so what do I have? I have um, from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankenweiler, Yay. Choose Your Own Adventure number 45, You Are a Shark, <laughs> <laughs> A Wrinkle in Time, Little Women, Wind in the Willows, Little House on the Prairie, Alice in Wonderland, The Last of the Mohicans, which is empty. Oh, nobody checked it out. Oh, they need a craplet. <laughs> I know. Well, and look at this one is terrible too because look, can you see the other blank one? It's Great the Gatsby. Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is that sad? But then there's like Sir Thomas Mallory's Knights of the Round Table, and I just it's fantastic. I love it. I love it a lot. That is so awesome. Isn't that cool? And just to make everybody feel better about Gatsby. My 15-year-old is reading Gatsby at school, and he, let's see, he just got to, he got past the shirt scene with Gatsby and, and Daisy and all the, all the shirts, and he came home and said, so F. Scott Fitzgerald, he's a really good writer, right? Yeah, he, he ranks. And he said, you can really tell by the way he describes <laughs> things because, because as he's describing things, I'm not getting bored. Nice. Yeah. That works for me. And then he said, but I also think there's something about him that's very wise. And I said, really, why? And he said, well, remember that scene with Jordan Baker where she said it... Um, Nick accuses her of being one of the most careless people he's ever met, and she said, "Well, it takes two people to make an accident." And so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna trust that everybody else gets out of my way. Yeah. He said, "I think, I think those are the people I don't like very much," and I get the feeling that Fitzgerald didn't like them either. There might be that. <laughs> you think? <laughs> It's possible. That's super it's funny. Possible. Which is is that funny when they pick up on stuff like that? Because the the thing that they read last year that got my well, he would have been twelve then. Twelve year old there was Dickens. Oh, what he did they read? Strict Christmas Carol. Wow, how old is he? Yeah. He's like ten or eleven. No, well, the little one is ten. The middle one, so he he's thirteen, going on fourteen. So he would have been um. 12 going on 13 last year and they read Christmas Carol and he usually we have to push him through do a lot of audiobook um, and kind of push him through more serious literature mm -hmm. um, but he wow one chapter of Dickens he was like mom nobody has said anything for pages but this is awesome <laughs> and you know this was the cutest thing you know what he says did he write more books <laughs> Uh, uh, right? uh, and I'm like, oh, we could probably read nothing but Dickens for the rest of your life. <laughs> yes, be still my, be still my beating heart. I'll hand him Bleak House in a hurry, man. I know, right? Get him hooked. That is. It was awesome. really cute. It was that was really cute. I was told I was not expecting that either at all from especially that book, but. Yeah. No, but you know, that was the thing when, when I did it, God, years ago now, I was so, I was so surprised that it felt so much like the movies. You know, the movies really yeah. stuck very close to the text, but right. how, how much more you could get out of the book because of his, his little commentary things yeah. that he would do. Yep. And also that I was shocked that the animated, what was it, Jim Carrey version? They got the character model designs right. They they matched the text. Nobody else has like the candle, the one that's the ghost of Christmas. Mm, ghost of Christmas Past is a candle with, with you know burning right. on its head, 
and the, its hat is a candle snuffer. Yeah. And so he takes off the candle snuffer, and he, that's how you can illuminate the past. Right. And and when Scrooge is pissed off and done with him, he whacks him with the snuffer, and he disappears. And that's that's what they did in the movie. And I thought, yeah. I would never have expected it from, sadly, from something that Jim Carrey was attached to. But then I hadn't seen the Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind at that point. So right. Yeah. I reassessed him after that. <laughs> Truman Show was good too. But um, but the, the I'm I'm so excited that 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 was a gateway drug. Yeah. It that was really surprising to me. And it it made him give more of the literature they're reading at school a chance. So, yeah. That's not bad at all. What are they reading this year? Um, what is he reading right now? Let's see. Oh, he's reading To Kill a Mockingbird right now. They're reading Mockingbird. Ooh. Yeah. Aaron did that. My 15-year-old did that last last year, I think. Yeah. And that's eighth, so we've got that in eighth grade because then ninth grade starts the um, history cycle again. So Sam's at modern right now. So history and literature track together in classical ed. Um, so he's at the more modern end of things right now and um, next year they'll start over again and go back to uh, Beowulf and Odyssey and um, the Aeneid. Is, my daughter's reading the Aeneid right now. Actually she's reading, she's reading the Aeneid in Latin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. With the dictionary? But, no, she's well because she's taken Latin since third grade. So All not, right, then. not with the dictionary. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah but no, so it's, yeah, it's interesting. And actually, I think he doesn't like the, um, he doesn't like the modern authors as much. They're not as engaging to him. I don't know why. It took me, it took me a while. I, I mean, I because I, stuff that was modern, modern, like science yeah. fiction. Right. And murder mysteries, those were always fun. Yeah. But the moderns, the Hemingway Right. Well, anything since Dickens died, and then <laughs> Ray Bradbury started. It was just started. all over after Dickens died, you know. It really was. That was the end of the good stuff. No, but I, I, I empathize. It took me a long time. It, well, it took me till I got my teaching credential, because that was the. Yeah. I, I didn't get Gatsby in high school. What? I skipped um, the year we did American Lit. I took a college writing class, which was a good thing, but I really regret not having gotten the American history lit team thing. Yeah. Well, and I never, I always, you know, I did Brit lit and I did old, I, at my high school you could kind of um, pick and choose and I always chose the, the old stuff. So I did Brit lit and I did Shakespeare and I did, you know, I, I stayed away too because yeah. <laughs> I thought they were boring. <laughs> yep. Well, I just got. I can share with. I can share with you guys, but everybody else is going to have to wait and hear it on Friday. I got an email from an actual Dumas scholar. Oh, very in, cool. In France, who's been listening, and she said she she came really close to not listening to the this book. She was going to bow out, but then she she listened to the first episode, the prequel, and and said, "Well, okay, I'll see what's going on," and. She said uh, she really appreciated the way that we're approaching the book, that the it, taking taking it seriously as a piece of literature instead of just some rag, and and then she said, but you missed something about Dumas' relationship to royalty, the split between the Napoleon and the um, the king, and she she sent me all this great information that I'm going to read for the podcast this week, but I realized it's because there's it's not because she necessarily wrote read it in a book, although I'm sure she she did at some point. It's because the the subtext of the characters as you know real people, the, the characters of the king uh, Louis the Sixteenth and, and Jean Philippe and um, and uh, I can't remember the name of the guy who came after him, but the difference between the House of Bourbon and the Orleans. They are characters in a story, and I didn't have the character background to understand 
Oh. Subtleties about these people. Whereas, you know, if you mention Henry yeah. VIII, mm -hmm. we we know that that character. Or Elizabeth, right. we know that character. Right. And and totally different thing. So I'm gonna see if she'll get on Skype with me and talk to me about it. That would be super fun. Right? Yeah. All right. We have the best people. And Erica <sighs> has something that she got at you got this at Stitches, Erica? Cool. All right, she's going to show, and I'm going to click. All right. You are, oh, you're typing right now. Erica's typing. There's typing. Okay. And dog snoring. And dogs are snoring. <laughs> Erica's typing, dogs are snoring. And the internet is slow. All right. Ooh. Oh, my name is Sherlock Holmes. Wait, can we make Erica bigger? I, you know, I can't. <laughs> yeah, Erica, Erica be bigger. Speaking of potato chips, would you please just get bigger? <laughs> it's what so That's so cool. I love it. Ah, that is so awesome. And I love the Sherlock Holmes thing. You need do to, like, put the links in things so we can go hunt them down. Yeah, do you remember who you got bought that from? Do you, did you save the receipt? <laughs> Were you good? She's typing. Were you good at stitches this year? Oh, good. You have the link. Yay. I've been an epic failure every time we've gone somewhere and I've tried to keep track of cards, cards, receipts, and audio, and it was a good try. It seems like there should be something, there should be a phone thing that would help you keep track of all of that. Yes. <laughs> Tag the video with like pictures that you took of stuff or something. You know? I'm sure that there's something. The, um, the other one I wanted was... Uh, someplace where you could record the audio and it would record the GPS location because then I could put yeah. like the Maryland Sheep and Wool map up on the this, internet. Yeah, this booth was where I was. <laughs> right, right there, right yeah. at the crosshairs. Right. But no, not yet. Sad. Not yet, although, ooh, wait, I did find there was an app that I was even thinking, oh, this could be really useful for other people too. Hmm. Or not? Oh well, there was there's one about prescription medicine called One RX. The spell it out O N E R X, and it finds the cheapest prescriptions oh. in your area, so uh, so you can show up more wisely. But it's um, it does you can you type in where you are and whether you have to do brand or generic and, and all that stuff. And I have an app like that to, that does gasoline the same way. You know, drive this way and you'll go get the cheapest gasoline in the area. But I, I don't know they had done this for the, for the drugs. Makes sense. Yes, these days it does, that's for sure. Very much right. so. Yeah. All right. So, Erica, did you have anything else you wanted to show to the, the window on the world? Oh, yes. I see her. Wait. Uh, I have to tap on you. <gasps> Ooh, is that? Is it a cup? Is it? Um, it looks like it's. It's a cup. Stuff. Wait, put, <laughs> put it back up again. It's a drinking cup. Is, is flowers? It's got little maybe? flowers on it, and the the flowers have been glazed on the inside. None of it made it on the outside. That's really cool. Very three D, and it's a it is a drinking cup. Or, or you could put. Knitting needles in it. Or a put things in it cup. <laughs> Every cup I own is a put things in it cup. Right. I don't think there's anything that hasn't wound up holding something other than what it was intended for <laughs> at some point. Oh, all right. Oh, whiskey glass. Oh, but, ah. yes. Using it as a tiny vase. That's beautiful. I think that would be so cute. Oh, and it was Jenny the Potter. Was she, oh. was she at Stitches? Yay! Erica says yes. Yay! Oh, well, no wonder it's good. 
there it is. Tiny whiskey glass. <laughs> Excellent. All right. I am going to go find out how to not have technical problems with our live stream. All righty. And I'm going to go try and craft something this week, which I can't make promises for because I just got from the library download the third book in the Pierce Brown series. Oh, this is a new Have one. Have you read this? Have you read Red Rising and Golden Sun? Mm -mm. I'm writing it down. Mm -hmm. So far, you have yet to steer me wrong because you're the one who told me about Outlander and you're the one who told me about Hunger Games. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So this is more intense than Hunger Games, but kind of that same-ish sort of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, it also reminds me a little bit of Ender's Game, mm -hmm. but like more... It's brutal in places. It's wow. very, um, yeah, but very good, very well written, very character, very rich characters that kind of pull you in. Um, and it's but, Red so, Rising? Red Rising, Golden Sun, and Morning Star is the third one. And it was Pierce? Brown. And um, did you read Ready Player One? Yes, loved it. Have you read his new one? No, what is it? He has, it's his second book. Oh. And uh, it, it got kind of mixed reviews. I think I think people wanted it's another It's not book. Ready Player Two? No. <laughs> no. Anyone, anyone who ever got on a computer from like 1978 to 1984, if you were on any of those computers during that span of period, that span of time, you will find all of those computers referenced in the Ready Player in the One. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, well, and, and game systems too. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was one of those moments where I'm reading, going, <gasps> oh, yeah, I forgot about. I know. Yeah. In fact, I Which, have. Along those lines, do you know what I found when I loaded my new iPad? No. Did you know that you can get app-based versions of the whole Zork series? Are you kidding? No. Awesome. <laughs> you can play through the whole thing on your iPad. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell my sister. That's like, I lost a solid week. <laughs> Seriously. My kids were like, what are you doing? You're just typing in black. It's black and white. What's going on? And I'm oh, like, God. you don't understand. I know. I've tried to explain, like, mist. The, you know, like, where it's, it's just typing. Missed my kids get because it's visual mm. now, because now there's you know but um yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 that would um that would suck up my days somewhere yeah. around here I have a punch card that's what I was just looking for an actual computer punch card punch card <laughs> I remember watching my dad at the, he worked oh, at the yeah. county office, and so they had, you know, the big honking machine where you had stacks of cards that were yep. two feet tall, and yeah. God help you if you dropped them, oh, yeah. which, which people did. But um, Erica just wrote and said, I, I take it Zork is an old DOS game. Yes. <laughs> did, it, did it run off of a, it ran off of a five and a half inch. A floppy. Mm -hmm. A real floppy floppy. Yep. Not, Little hard floppies. No, the real, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the one, the ones that when you closed the the little door and clicked it hard, it yeah. did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. I I finally pulled the um, when I did the audio for um, my little episode last year about serial and the problem between the procasts and the podcasts, mm -hmm. I I had to go find. The audio for a modem. Oh, it couldn't have been hard to find, though, right? It was hard to find one that was the right length, because um. we had. Um, I saw that AT used to use punch cards. I'm so sorry. I hope you didn't drop them, <laughs> ever. <laughs> and Kathy, oh my gosh! Oh, see now I am gonna have to take a picture of my punch card. I have to go find that. But yeah, the um, the. Uh, no, that's gone. Gone. It'll come back to me at three in the morning. There you go. <laughs> you just typed, "I am old, Father William." <laughs> oh yes, and at yes, floppy floppy disks. 
Oh, the modem, the the sound of the modem. All of the modem sounds that I found were you'd hear the the high pitched squeal, high pitched mm -hmm. squeal, right, and then it would cut off. Uh, like, oh no, no, it goes on. There's yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine never cut off that fast, and it never. did. It went through a series of tones while it was con conversating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice word. Yes, it conversated with the online thing. But yeah, that was um, that was fun. So Ready Player One, did you read The Magicians? No, what's that one? Speak, it, it made me think of it because you said brutal. Um, the Magicians is uh, if Harry Potter was the next school age up, so college. Okay. And if Harry Potter didn't have chocolate frogs so much as people who were strung out the way you'd get on heroin, but on magic. Okay. And it helps to know mythology because it, it gets pretty deep into it a, a couple of places. It also helps if you l were somebody who read The Chronicles of Narnia when you were a kid. Oh. Because he over has and his, over and over. Yeah. And over. Well, and he has uh, he has the uh, Kathy's watching it. I, I was going to say they're they're doing a mini series on or a, a limited limited show. You know where they're doing the limited number of episodes and stuff. Um, they're doing it right now on Sci Fi Network, and I am really impressed. And yeah, this is from uh, Lev Grossman. He he wrote the books, and I didn't like them the way that I liked Hunger Games. Katniss is a hard character to like mm -hmm. in many ways. But but there's a lot about her that you can respect. And the main character in The Magicians is kind of a poop. Oh. <laughs> and it's it's the first time that I've read uh, kind of an anti-hero character mm -hmm. who, who I I was compelled to keep reading about because usually I just go, eh. But Put it down. other people around him are so interesting, and their motivation for what they do and why they do it is so interesting. And then this whole layer of this this fillery, which is the the Narnia stand-in, mm -hmm. um, it's it's pretty amazing. And I'll I'll I have to give props to Lev Grossman who who wrote it that he he went he went places where I saw it coming and I said, oh, he can't possibly. And then he did. And then yeah. he did. Or or worse. Yeah. This this Pierce Brown series has moments like that where it's just like, okay, I can't breathe now. <laughs> wow, did you just you did? Okay. <laughs> I think there's a actually oh, I saw it come across Twitter. Somebody interviewed him um about killing your characters off. Uh-huh. <laughs> You know, it's like, okay, so you made all these really great characters, and then you just kind of bam, 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 bam. Yeah. 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 Well, that's isn't that what people have said about, I don't watch it, but the Game of Thrones thing, that you never know. It could be a main character who's going to get 86. Yeah, see, and I don't watch. I, um, I started reading those as they came out. Mm -hmm. So I read the first one before the second one was out, and I stuck with them the whole way. And then he started writing for HBO, and all of a sudden, he never finished the series. I, and, I saw that. I was yeah, kidding. he hasn't finished it. I'm really annoyed. Um, and the thing that I'm most annoyed about is I feel like the story has changed because of the TV version. Yeah. Um, because the last, the last book he read, he wrote, I felt, was very structurally different. Than the, than the previous books. And I felt like things were being done a certain way because of the visual that they would provide and not necessarily because of how it played out in the story. Did you find that the characters were changed based on the actors who'd been playing them as well? I've always wondered this. I don't know. I have no clue. You know, that I don't know. But I, um, the, particularly the character of Jon Snow, I feel like he was portrayed very differently than he's in then he came across to me in the books. Um, I didn't really care for at, at least what I watched. I mean, I watched like two or three episodes, and then I was like, can't do this. Um, 
I popped in on one where it was uh, rape and murder. Oh, for, they also... I, it was like 15 yeah. minutes of nonstop, and I went, I don't yeah. need it. Well, and they also added... They added a lot of... I mean, the rape and murder is there in the books, but it's um, the descriptors aren't there, and a lot of the... Um, you know, there's a conversation happening, and it's happening in a brothel, but the in the book, the descriptors of all of the extraneous stuff that they then put in the miniseries aren't there. Um, so I just feel like the con the context, excuse me, changed a lot. And the emphasis, the em which changes the emphasis of the story, I think. Yeah, so. unlike Outlander. Right. I I've been blown away by right. that adaptation. Yeah. And her clothes. Oh my God! Have you seen the French dr the dress that she's? Got? You can just watch for the clothes. I know you don't even you can turn the volume off and just. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The only thing like the only thing that bothers me about that is that Claire and Jamie and these people were in my head a certain way. Yes. And how they were in my head really, really, really does not match how they are on TV. <laughs> no. So. I've gotten to the point where I'm accepting them yeah. as stand-ins for the people in my head. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Although. Yeah, unlike. Damn. Unlike Game of Thrones, with you know Tyrion Lannister is exactly him. Really? Yes. That's. Wow. I don't know, but I guess you don't come across many you know small people in literature. So, and in our movie culture, we don't have that many. <laughs> you know, if it's a main, really awesomely played character, there's kind of one guy who's playing him. Yeah, and thank God he's a fabulous actor. Thank God he's a fabulous actor. Yeah, yeah. we just watched The Station Agent. Um, I don't know. It was my first time Andrew had seen it before, and I missed it. Yeah, he's, he's amazing. Was ama oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, and I, I um, pr uh, what's her name? God, she was in Good Night and Good Luck. Um, Patricia Cl Clarkson, I think, hmm. was the um, the woman in Station Agent. And she's... Marvelous. Oh, and then I showed the boys good night and good luck because Cold War um, Red Scare stuff was being discussed in class. And I said, oh, actually, there's a movie you might like. And so we watched Quiz Show with mm -hmm. Ray Fiennes, and the Robert Redford movie, and then we watched Good Night and Good Luck. And they both came away from Good Night and Good Luck with their eyes like this. I said, Edward R. Murrow's amazing. <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, you know, I grew up in a world where there was a voice of the news. When I grew up, it was Walter Cronkite's voice, and right. he was right. he was safe and stable and sturdy. And as long as you could hear his voice, the world was going to be okay. Yeah. And then um, I remember when they fired um, Bob Bob Edwards from NPR not long after 9/11, and I I wrote them a letter and said, "You bastards." Yeah. That that yeah. was the only He's safe my person. Voice. Yeah. His yeah. his voice was the safe voice after 9/11 and and bah. But then um I got over it. <laughs> <laughs> it got better. Yeah. It's, oh, change wow. is hard. Change is hard. Change is hard. Change is very hard. Ooh. Boovies. Oh, <laughs> I get it. I had to say it out loud for a reason. Uh, At had written into the chat room chat room that she really likes boobies. Boo! Boobies. <laughs> yeah, I'll be using that. You are so heavy. I thought it was boobs from um, the true meaning of smek day and the the boobs being the alien race in in that book. Have you have your kids read smek day yet, Erica and Don? Mm mm. Oh. Oh, okay, everyone, Adam Rex is the author. The True Meaning of Smek Day, I've talked about before on the podcast, it is, it's not a short book. It's it's a good, you know, chunk of change. It's not a Harry Potter book, but um, it's written from the perspective of an eighth grade girl who's uh, grown up in New York City. She's Puerto Rican, and the alien who she winds up getting to know in this which is it's a really cool how they finally get together and work together. Um, the the alien did some bad research, and so his his name is J Lo. Nice. It is so.
fantastic. And I mean, everybody in the family has read it. All the grandparents have read it. It's just, it's this truly heartwarming and yet completely ridiculous, very funny book. Nice. We'll yeah. have to find that one. Yep. So the boobs, the boobs are the bad guys and in the beginning. So yes, there are, there are people who get described as boobs in the household. Nice. Not any of us are boobs. We describe other people as being boobish. <laughs> it's good to get all new adjectives out of books like that. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. And Erica, I'm sending the microphone to you today. I was hoping it was going to settle itself. And I know I'm weeping too. I missed hearing your voice. But, uh, but next week, you will have a mic. And one way or another, I'm going to find out how to recode. I may have to actually build a streaming something, but I'll get her done because that, that bites. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for showing up. Thank you for writing into the chat window, too. And we'll talk to you. We'll talk to you next week. Erica's waving. Here, I can actually, I can select Erica to wave at you. There's Erica. <laughs> Erica and Dawn and Big Puppy. Yeah, Yay. Dolly, say hi, Doll. Oh. 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 <laughs> Pretty baby. Yeah. All right. Have a good week. You know what I realized? We what? didn't flip. It didn't flip back and forth today when we were talking. It did some. I had I had selected the wrong so thing. So you figured it out. I did. Nice. Yep. As long as I can keep typing or tapping. It only took, it only took me an hour to figure that out. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> All right. I'll Pretty talk cool. to you later. Bye. Bye.